Well, Tesla has always built on a 400 volt architecture, right up until the Cybertruck. And they've got pretty fast charging speeds, uh, most cars up to 250 kilowatts. The Cybertruck is the first with 800 volt architecture that has a maximum charging speed now of 325 kilowatts. So nearly 50% faster. But is that the 800 volts? Or is something else in play? And how much quicker is 800 volt charging anyway? Is it worth the money? I'm Dave, and this is Dave Takes It On. The electric motors in a modern EV are either DC, that's direct current, or AC, that's alternating current. All batteries store electricity in DC, all superchargers and rapid and ultra rapid chargers supply DC, all home chargers and public fast chargers supply AC. Confused? No need to be. The motors on an EV can be either AC or DC, and the driver will never know the difference unless they look it up. My own motor in my early Model S is an induction motor, and that is AC, alternating current. Model 3 and Model Y motors are usually AC induction motors in the rear, and they often use DC in the front on the dual motor models. In reality, there's no significant difference as far as the driver is concerned, and we get a good, solid, reliable motor that's likely to last the lifetime of the vehicle. Although very early Tesla motors were prone to all sorts of failures, after about 2012-2013 they cracked the problems, and generally now are good for half a million miles or more. The battery in use in an EV are generally 18650s in the very early models, like mine. And that stands for 18mm diameter, 65mm tall, and the O at the end signifies it's a round battery cell. Well, these were quickly replaced with 2170 or 4680 cells, which means 21 or 46mm diameter, respectively, and 70 or 80mm tall. They all operate at a nominal, th nominal 37 volts, and different sizes can store different amounts of energy. However, a bigger difference in storage is by way of their chemistry. Be it nickel, manganese, cobalt, that's the NMCs, nickel, cobalt, aluminium, NCAs, which is mine, and lithium ferrous phosphate, LFP. New EV, newer EVs now might have sodium ion, aluminium ion, or even solid state. Well, Tesla in particular, and some others, uh, change their chemistry from time to time, partly based on what's available and what the price is. In general, there's very little for the driver to choose between. NMC gives out and can take in more power more quickly. LFP are much cheaper. Being less energy dense, suffer much less from thermal runaway. But they have poorer charging in very cold weather. While the old days of EVs catching fire are now pretty remote in China, it's now illegal. They have to be puncture proof and burn proof and runaway proof and everything. When you buy your car, you get a range and you get a performance time for 0 to 60, and that stands whatever battery size and chemistry you actually have. Now, in the early days of EV development, there were far more components available for industry based on a 400 volt architecture than an 800. Hence, they were easier to obtain and cheaper to buy. The batteries are arranged in a combination of series and parallel combinations to give a nominal output of 400 volts. They performed perfectly well, so 400 volt architecture and 400 volt charges became the norm. Why rock the boat? Now, the one problem all EVs suffer from is heat production. When charging or discharging, they produce heat, and it is the heat that first loses efficiency, but also the heat that dictates the size of the wiring. Thicker wiring, less heat, and less heat loss. Well, a car operating at 800 volts uses less amps, that produces less heat. Hence, an 800 volt architecture car can have much thinner wiring and th smaller components, making it lighter for the same power than a 400 volt EV. Well, the same applies to charging. A charger operating at 800 volts can send power in more quickly with less heat generation. But with the massive existing industries that were supplying mainly 400 volt equipment in the early days, there was little appetite to make the change to 800 volts. Porsche was the first to break out of that, introducing the 800 volt Taycan, followed closely by GM and the Hummer. And Tesla followed a long way behind with the Cybertruck. EVs made in China like BYD, Xpeng and Neo now favour 800 volt for all except the real budget EVs. So, which is better? 
Well, the reality is neither's better. 800 volts has an advantage in that it can handle higher charging speeds while producing less heat. So it allows for lighter vehicles, increasing efficiency. It can provide higher power to the motors and use more power in regenerative braking, increasing efficiency. But it all comes at the expense of the price. They are dearer to make. Also, the EV public charging structure is based largely on 400 volt chargers and the 800 volt chargers we have often offer little more power than the 400 volts. They, they merely double the voltage by halving the current. True 800 volt chargers are still fairly rare, but they're starting to be installed. So to answer the question, which is faster, you need to look at the chargers being used. See, Tesla have virtually no 800 volt chargers. They're all 400 volts, although they're at the start of rolling them out this year. It's a slow process and existing chargers are very unlikely to be upgraded anytime soon. Non-Tesla CPOs, by contrast, have many chargers capable of 1000 volts, but they put out about the same total overall power, so effectively it's just halving the current. In addition, many locations do not provide the full output power to each and every individual charger, working on the basis that the chances of every single charger operating at maximum power all at the same time is actually an impossibility. So this makes measuring 800 volt charging speeds very difficult, but we do have two great examples that can be compared. The first of these is the Pioneer Porsche with the Taycan and the later arrival, the Tesla Cybertruck. So both are 800 volts and both have officially recorded charging experience to give the data. GridServe keep a leaked table of the fastest charging EVs they have charged and they have proudly reported that a Porsche Taycan 800 volts rated at 320 kilowatts on one of their 350 kilowatt chargers achieved a maximum speed of 320 kilowatts flat out. Tesla meanwhile plugging their 800 volt Cybertruck rated at 325 kilowatts into a 400 volt supercharger recorded speeds of 325 kilowatts flat out. Call that a dead heat but interesting to note that both hit their rated maximum charging speeds. And this indicates that the fastest charging speed is far more limited by the charging equipment installed than by the chargers they are plugged into. The other example is the latest Xpeng G6, which has an 87.5 kilowatt hour 800 volt battery versus the refresh version of the Tesla Model Y, which has a 75 kilowatt hour battery at 400 volts. Neither has been fully tested and recorded, but both produce data in their specs. The G6 states a maximum charging speed of 280 kilowatts and a charging time of 18 minutes from 10% to 80%. Now, with a range of 340 miles, this equates to about 240 miles added, and that's about 13 miles per minute. The Model Y quotes a charging speed of 250 kilowatts and an addition of 166 miles in 15 minutes plugged into a 400 volt charger or about 11 miles per minute. So the G6 wins by a short head, but effectively you'll hardly notice the difference sat in your car waiting. Well, once the true 800 volt uh, chargers start appearing in locations with full power available to the chargers, situation will undoubtedly change. But for the next few years, it's gonna be virtually no different. Main difference is to the manufacturer. See, at first, they're just dearer to make, but as mass production, production takes over, and prices drop, then the advantages, the lighter, more efficient EVs, show through. More efficiency means smaller batteries, and that means lighter cars, and lighter cars need smaller batteries, and so on and so on. Far more important than, is it 800 or 400 volts, is the chemistry of the battery. And vital on top of all of that is the correct onboard systems and equipment. See, at one time, all Teslas were restricted to just 150 or 175 kilowatts. Then one day, they discovered that in the whole of the charging circuit, there was just one component that was holding the speed back to that 150, 175. They made a more powerful one, tried it. Next day, all long range and performance models were fitted with it. And now, all of them charge at 250 kilowatts. 
Well, the next jump might be more difficult than that, but the circuit in the Cybertruck is now rated at 325 kilowatts. So they've now got the kit to make that happen in other models. Bit of experience as well. With the imminent increase of the V4 cabinets to 500 kilowatts at 1000 volts, that move might already be in the pipeline. Previously, there was simply no need. A really good solid 400 volt architecture is always going to be a benchmark. 166 miles in 15 minutes is perfectly adequate for the vast majority of EV drivers. Obviously, if the cost of raising that to 250 uh, in 15 minutes is reasonable and all other factors are equal, then that's likely to happen. But there are limits. I always look back and see in over a hundred years of the development of the petrol engine car, and no, I don't remember it all, we never got a single car that could do a thousand miles on a tank full. It was a supremely simple thing to achieve. No new tech was required, no actually no breakthrough of any sort. All it would take was to just double the size of the petrol tank. Nobody ever did, and the motoring world never missed it. Nobody in the last 120 years of motoring demanded losing half the boot space to give them that 1,000 miles. Nobody demanded they beef up the suspension to be able to handle that additional 50 or 100 kilograms of extra weight. It was always possible. Nobody ever did. Well, likewise, the mythical 1,000-mile range on Navy, exactly that, mythical. Nobody actually wants it. What we want is much more efficient motoring. If an EV can drive 500 miles and achieve around 6 miles per kilowatt hour, it will use half the amount of electricity as one doing just 3 miles per kilowatt hour. And more people will want that. If the charging takes just 10 minutes, then few will pay more to have it reduced to 5 minutes. The vast majority of drivers stop every few hours anyway and take a break. They stretch the legs, flex the back, and just want a few moments to themselves. Where did this compulsion to get a thousand miles and charging faster and filling a tank come from? Ah, well, it was not from the drivers, nor from the potential buyers. I'll leave the source to your imagination. 800 volt architecture is not a magical cure-all offering double speed charging. It offers the potential to charge faster. Whether we want, and more importantly, we'll pay the extra to get it is an entirely different question. And we, of course, face the old chicken and the egg poser. If to get that faster charging, we need a new car and new chargers, which is going to come first. So I'd be very miffed if I bought a brand new 800 volt super fast charging tech masterpiece, only to realise that I actually charge about 90% of the time at home. And that, as we all know, is AC charging that proceeds at crawling pace. And the only times I would ever use that 800 volt would be on the three, four or five road trips I do each year. And what happens then if I find out that on those routes, the only chargers that were available were the old 400 volt superchargers. Couldn't even use it. Well, the Chinese are concentrating on making their EVs very much cheaper and packing in only what's actually needed, but then adding a few goodies, just throwing them in. Tesla's concentrating on making their EVs the best tech in the world. They got things like steer by wire and soon FSD, if the stories are true. Neither is, in lo is looking into that thousand mile figure for range, nor to charging in less than five minutes. Well, sure, if the battery companies come up with a new battery that offers that and is much cheaper, it's going to happen but it's surely not on the top of the priority list of the manufacturers. Well, if I was looking to change my Model S, then 800 volt would not be on my list of essentials, nor would five minute charging, if it cost extra, nor would I be searching for a 1000 mile range, nor a supersized battery. At the moment, around 90% of all my motoring is done using my home charger. The journeys I make are all done on a single charge. I make it there and back. And I drive much further than most. And there'll be numerous comments appearing that demand the very latest 800 volt EVs as the best thing since sliced bread, but I look at the refresh Model 3 and I see it gets 436 miles at WLTP, and the Model Y refresh gets 387. 
both from a 75 kilowatt hour usable battery. BYD Sea Line 7 gets to cover less, 311 miles require as a much larger battery, 91.3 kilowatt hour. The Xpeng G6 also covers less, 354, and requires an 87.5 kilowatt hour battery to get that. Now, a car that can do 300, 436 miles on just 75 kilowatt hours usable is just in a totally different league of efficiency. Battery size versus range should be as important to buyers as MPG is to petrol lovers. Is it strange that the world's most efficient EV is a nearly two-year-old model that uses a humble 400 volt architecture and costs about 5,000 less than the long list of so-called Tesla killers featuring 800 volts? Hmm. I'm Dave, thanks for watching.